Hello everyone, it's me, it's Hawk, and today I want to make a video about beginning your spiritual journey or witchcraft and what to know about it. Five things to know about it. These are all my opinions, so if you disagree, that's okay. If you don't find this useful, that's okay. I hope you enjoy other videos of mine though. Um, in that case, if you are interested about learning five things, I think any beginner um, who's getting started in the craft, uh, the, what sh they should know those five things. Uh, just keep on watching. Also, if you see me looking over here, that's because I have a script on my iPad. So yeah, uh, that being said, let's get into this. Number one. So the magic that you see in movies and books and video games, especially fictional ones, and even some quote unquote documentaries, are usually not an accurate de reflection or depiction of real life magic. The laws of reality in real life are still present. Um, you can do all these things, but you don't know if a storm's gonna roll in. You don't know if uh, an earthquake's gonna happen. This doesn't mean your spell backfired, but it just means, or that your spell caused it, it just means reality is still going on outside of your spell. And also, you won't be able to turn people into frogs um, or fly unless it's in an astral or dream state. Um, just saying, like, what you see in fiction, generally speaking, like, 99% of the time is not an accurate depiction of reality. Harry Potter magic, while it does borrow some terms from real life magic, such as Mandrake Root, is not reality. Um, also, speaking of magic, and this will tie into number one, uh, you gotta put in work in addition to your magic. Your magic's only gonna get you so far. If you don't put in the mundane effort or the non-magical effort, uh, the magic is less likely to manifest, if that makes sense. You gotta do things in addition to the spell if possible. Don't let the spell be the only like work uh, in the situation or the working. So yeah, let's get into number two. Number two, black and white magic doesn't exist. Um, for one, they have a very heavily racial connotation to them and often are used to stigmatize uh, the magical traditions and practices of uh, black and indigenous and peop other people of color, especially ATRs and or African traditional religions and indigenous practices. Um, they are often used to stigmatize those while uh, white or Eurocentric magic is seen as white is in black or white and it, it's it's just not it, it's not good it's not good um and in addition to that something that you should know is that uh magic itself is not inherently good or bad even baneful workings such as hexings can be done for a good reason uh such as to stop an abuser or get justice when the law will not help Historically, and even today, ma magic isn't necessarily good or bad, it's just a tool. For instance, just as a knife can use to be used to chop up vegetables and help in food preparation as in a good thing, it can also be used to harm someone, like to stab someone. So that doesn't make the knife bad or good, it just means whoever is wielding it and their intent makes the action good or bad, and even then it depends on the context. Um, magic is the same way. Just as the knife isn't inherently good or bad, neither is magic. Number three, always do ample research and cross-reference your sources. Amino, Tumblr, Pinterest, uh, Witch Talk, generally speaking, are not the best sources because they tend to pull from their UPG and while unverified personal gnosis can be good and useful, uh, it's always good to look at accredited, scholarly, historical, what works for other people, what has historically been done, you need to look at that and always see where your source got their information. And if they do not cite their sources, do not take it nearly as seriously. Um, make sure that your information is seen across the board from videos to forum posts to books and things of that nature. Make sure that other practitioners have used this information and that's just not widespread misinformation and actually is good information that is accurate. Um, make sure your sources are not spreading misinformation. As much as UPGs uh, knowing intuitively is great, you do need to know the scientific and metaphysical properties, number one for safety, um, but also just to back your learning up with uh, knowledge that is accurate to reality and to also know what you're getting yourself into and to make sure that what you're learning is not misinformation. Certain plants are toxic to ingest, toxic to burn, toxic to touch, 
and it may not be all three. For instance, certain plants are only toxic when burned or ingested. Uh, you just don't know. And certain crystals cannot go into water without serious consequences, such as pyrite, which forms sulfuric acid when wet. You do not want that in a crystal elixir, or malachite, because it is mostly copper, will form toxic uh, things to the touch and fumes. So you do not want that in uh, your water. You do not, do not want to cleanse it with water. You do not want to put it in your elixirs. And you always want to wash your hands after handling those crystals. And certain objects' correspondences may lend well to some things better than others. For instance, cinnamon. Well, yes, great for speed. has that fiery kick behind it. And if you don't want a fiery kick behind it and you're working, you might want to use coffee instead because it's a stimulant. But it also is nurturing in the sense that it can be used to help plants grow. So... It all depends on your intention and how you want things to manifest. Certain objects will lend better to certain workings than others. And uh, also be sure you are not appropriating closed traditions. It's okay to learn about closed traditions and see where certain practices may come from, but it's another to take from a closed tradition that you are not a part of, in my opinion. Just don't appropriate uh, closed practices or use from closed practices unless you are a part of it if that makes sense. This leads me on to number four. Number four, you do not need fancy tools to perform effective magic. You don't even need tools. You just need intention, action, and energy work. Historically, your average cunning folk did not use fancy chalices, wands, or ritual daggers. They may not have used fancy crystals or anything of the sort. They used what they had around them and at their disposal. Instead of chalices, they used cups and bowls. They used knives or sticks. Um, they used rocks and plants around them in their pantry along with their intent, and you can do the same. People who generally perform ceremonial magic, while there's nothing wrong with performing ceremonial magic on a budget, uh, generally had a lot of time and money on their hands, such as King Solomon, who was a literal king. Like, you gotta keep in mind, people who historically have performed these higher magic, not that there's anything wrong with folk or ceremonial, uh, but higher magic uh, is typically performed by the wealthier and upper class. Not saying someone who isn't, either of those things can't perform it. I'm just saying you gotta know what historically has been done because it, there's nothing wrong with the fact that you can't afford these quote-unquote proper tools. You can use what you have around you and that's what people have done historically and even do to this day even in the ceremonial spaces, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just something you gotta know. And fifth, uh, my fifth tip is to start with research and energy work and be sure to document everything. Be it on a paper, in paper, in a school notebook, or a Google Doc. That way you can reference what you learned, monitor workings, and record results. <sighs> Learn your energy and build your skills and knowledge. The basics you should ideally know are protection, grounding, centering, banishing, binding, cleansing, clearing, charging, energy sensing, and some form of divination. This way you have your foundations no down and you can get out of a sticky situation. Always, always, always approach spell work from and practice from a calm, level-headed place. Do divination to make sure if you should do it and how things might pan out. Um, if you're going to do something, uh, make sure you know how to undo it in case things go south. It's okay if you mess up because we learn from our mistakes, but be sure to write everything down so you know exactly what messed up and how to undo it in the event that you have to. Mistakes are what we learn from and it's okay to make them. It's just really important that you know the energies, uh, the energy work and basics so that you can be prepared. Anyways, so again, to recap, my five tips here are one, Fictional magic is fictional for a reason. Do not consider it a part of reality nine times out of ten. Even that one time, it's very rare. Uh, two, there is no white or black magic. Learn where those terms come from. They are often used to demonize indigenous and ATR and non-Eurocentric practices. So know where your terms come from. White and black magic doesn't exist. Uh, magic is not inherently good or bad. Three, do research and cross-reference. Do not take your first source as your only source. Four, you do not need fancy tools. Historically, that just hasn't been done for the most part, aside from some ceremonial spaces. So, from, like, done by the upper class and literal kings and queens. So, yeah, 
just keep that in mind. And fifth, always document everything and start with the basics. And those basics, again, are, um, you know, uh, the basics again are protection, grounding, centering, banishing, binding, cleansing, clearing, charging, energy sensing, and some form of divination and grounding and all that. Um, so yeah. And those are the five things I think you should know when starting a spiritual practice or witchcraft journey. And I hope you found this helpful. This is Hawk signing out. Stay magical.